Hey everybody, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. Well, it's time to put this one together here. This is the Johnny Quest Dragonfly plane. So that's what this video is gonna be about, is building this model and putting it together. Um, I'm gonna be lighting the model as well. In fact, I've already started the process here. These are the two trees that contain all the parts. If you'd watched my preview video, you know there's not a lot of parts of this model. And uh, so what I've started already is light blocking the interior because we're going to go ahead and install some lights here. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out some of the windows here. There's not a lot of them here on the side of the fuselage. So those are going to be lit as well as the cockpit. And then we're also going to install an LED here that's flickering for the engine. So again, starting with the light blocking here, I've painted the interior a black color. And I've done that to both sides here. I'm going to do a little bit more. And then after which I'm going to then prime the outside with a gray primer. And one thing that I am trying out with this model kit just to see how it works is an adhesion primer. This one in particular is made by Duplicolor and uh, as the name implies it's supposed to help the uh, paint stick onto the surface better. I actually plan to use this on another project here uh, soon so I just wanted to see how it would work out with this one in particular. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and proceed with more steps here and I will show you my progress here shortly. All right, guys, I just want to take a minute here just to show you how the lights are going to be situated inside the fuselage. So what I'm using now are three three millimeter square cool white lights that I got from modeltrainsoftware.com. And I have them positioned here so that we have enough light spreading out throughout the fuselage as well as into the cockpit. The engine is going to be lit with a five millimeter flickering LED that I've tinted with uh, Tamiya's yellow and orange to create an amber color and all of that will be hooked together and fed through this tube here. Now I'm using a plastic hollow tube uh, rather than a brass rod uh, because I was not able to um, get the metal piece um, to stay uh, adhered to the plastic properly, it just kept popping off. So I decided to go with plastic instead and it worked better. And I'm using this uh, two-part epoxy to accomplish that. So again, the wires will be fed through that tube and down into a stand. Next step, of course, will be to secure these in place. I'm going to do that with super glue. And I tell you what, before I do that, I'm going to put these two halves together and uh, hook it up to a battery so I can show you how, um, how the lighting is working out. All right, so it's a little bright here in the garage, but uh, hopefully I'm shading uh, enough light here that you can see that the portholes are receiving the proper amount of light there, as well as the cockpit. And as we move around to the back, you can see the flickering LED situated back there. All right, so the next step now is to proceed with uh, securing everything into place and then uh, gluing the two halves together and, as I said, working on the seams. So I will show you my progress shortly. Okay, and just to show you how I am connecting or securing the lights into place here, um, I am using super glue versus hot glue because I was told that hot glue is uh, not good for the wires and it could damage your LEDs. So what I do is uh, I use super glue and I use an accelerator. So um, here we have the five millimeter flickering LED in the place that's held into place here. And essentially what I do is I use um, masking tape to hold it in to position here. And I just simply apply the super glue like so. And I put just a little bit more here. And then once I put the super glue into place, uh, I will then put some accelerator. And that way it hardens the super glue fairly quickly so it can stay in place and you can just let go and there you have it. So once that's done, I'll just give that a, a minute just to make sure it's dry and then I'll peel away the masking tape. Okay, so now this LED is dried, I mean the, the glue I should say is dried here and so as you can see I used the masking tape to hold in position so I just wrap masking tape around the fuselage like this and I'll just um, slice it here and then I just use uh, tweezers to pull it off like that like so, and there we have it. And you can see I've already done that along here as well. So I've got a good amount of glue that's holding all these lights now in position so they won't get loose. All right, so here we have now the two halves of the main fuselage put together. The seams have been addressed on the top and bottom of the ship. And to uh, work with the seams, I used uh, Mr. Hobby's Dissolve Putty to begin with. And this is nice because you can apply it with a brush. And I did that along the length of the ship on the top and bottom. And then I sanded that down with about 400 grit sandpaper to smooth out that seam. And then I put another layer of putty, but this time I used a plastic putty. 
and uh, I did that several times and kept smoothing it over using different grits of sandpaper again starting out with 400 and then went down to 800 and finally to 1200 so uh, again it's really just polishing that surface and, and making it smoother and smoother so far I'm very happy with the uh, lines that they provide on the hull of the ship they really do stand out and uh, so far everything is, is moving along quite nicely here the wires are in place and everything's really set to go so for the uh, color of the ship I'm going to use testers flat white and then I plan to apply a semi-gloss coat to that as well so got to work on the cockpit and then assemble the uh, wings and these uh, smaller wings up here as well and there really aren't too many steps left here so we're getting close so I will show you my progress here shortly all right so here we have the plane all assembled uh, there's really not much as I said before to this plane but we've now put in the two wings here now one thing that we can do to make this look a little more complete the, the uh, wings slip in pretty tight so there's not too much of a gap there but if you want to make it look a little more finished what we're going to do is fill in this gap here with this plastic putty the reason we're going to use plastic putty is because it's water uh, soluble so and you'll see what I mean all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply now a strip of this all along the edge all right everybody and here we now have the completed model kit this is the Johnny Quest Dragonfly plane um, as seen in the animated TV series Johnny Quest, uh, this model was released in early 2015 by Mobius Models. The model is a decent size, it measures 12 inches from front to back, and in my opinion makes a very good replica of the ship that you see on TV. I'm not aware of any inaccuracies here, it looked pretty good to me, so, um, you know, compared to what you see on the TV show, it's uh, a very good representation of that. So overall the model, as you can see following along the video, that it was fairly easy to put together. Um, this is something you can uh, do in a weekend. Uh, as you saw the model comes with just some basic pieces, the two halves of the fuselage, the wings are just a single piece that slide into place, the tail section is already molded into the uh, main body of the ship. So your challenge uh, to building this kit is going to be uh, addressing the seams on the top and the bottom, which really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, but I think probably your biggest challenge is going to be the cockpit. So hopefully you found my advice uh, useful that I gave you in the video here. Uh, as you saw, I used uh, masking fluid to accomplish this. And I am so glad I came across masking fluid because really to try to attempt this with masking tape would be very difficult. Um, the one big advantage you have with masking fluid is that it's almost impossible for the paint to bleed underneath the masking fluid uh, versus uh, masking tape, which I'm sure you've all worked with, uh, can be kind of a mess if it doesn't. Uh, do what it's supposed to. So again with just a fine brush you can apply the masking fluid to really fine small areas like you have here and then of course peeling it away is not a big deal as long as you have a sharp exacto knife. So overall I'm really pleased with the way the cockpit turned out here. Now I as you well know had every intention to light the model and I say that because um, two of the lights burned out once I hooked up the power supply. So I'm not sure why that happened. Those lights are designed to work with a 9-volt battery, but uh, unfortunately that, that uh, mishap occurred and there's no way really to replace them. And that is the one thing about LEDs. I was asked once, uh, you know, what do you do if the LEDs burn out? And there's really not much you can do, particularly in a situation like this. There's no way I'm going to tear apart this model so that I can replace those LEDs. Um, I still have one that is lighting the interior here and you can kind of see there's a bluish glow in the cockpit area. Unfortunately, it's just not going to light it up as brightly as I had wanted to. Uh, the backlight is working pretty well. This, of course, is a flickering 5mm uh, LED. Um, if you were able to see this in real life, you would notice that this actually does not glow uh, bright white this way. It actually is a yellowish color, and, uh, but unfortunately, the video is, is washing that out. And again, for the main color, I used Tester's Flat White and then I applied a semi-gloss uh, coating and I chose to use Tamiya's semi-gloss spray. And a couple other things that you can do is you can certainly darken up the panel lines. Uh, in fact, that's something the instructions mentioned that uh, you can certainly do with a wash of some sort. Uh, I decided not to do that. Uh, if you look at this model in uh, real life, I think you can pretty much tell in this lighting too, the panel lines are fairly prominent already, so I didn't think they needed to be darkened any further. 
The other thing that you could experiment with are maybe shading some of the panels, uh, maybe taking some light gray and painting a few here and there. Um, I decided not to do that. I thought it looked fine just as is. One other thing to draw your attention to is the nose cone here, and you can see there's some black striping that I added there. And uh, if you watch the TV show, you'll probably see scenes where there is no black striping, but as you can see in the slides that I'm uh, putting up here, the uh, black striping is rather evident. So I uh, like the way that looks, so I decided to apply it to the kit as you see here. All right, guys, so it's time to give it my rating here. For accuracy, I'd give it a five. I think the model represents a very good replica of the ship that we see on TV. For ease of assembly, I'd give it a five because it was very straightforward to put together. For likability, I really like the kit. I'm a big fan of the show, and it was a pleasant surprise to have this kit available for us fans here. And for affordability, I'd give it a single dollar sign because you can find the kit for under $30. So again, uh, this is a cool um, kit to add to your collection. And if you're obviously a fan of the TV show, uh, again, it was a pleasant surprise to see this on the Mobius website. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I had to uh, go to, and I got this actually from culttvman.com. Uh, you can uh, put those models on reserve, and then of course when they're released, uh, you're charged the fee for the model kit. So I uh, wasn't sure what the availability was going to be like, so I put it on reserve, um, and it had been on reserve for about a year. It took about that long for the model to be released. Um, however, I was at my um, local hobby store today, and I did see a couple of the kits on the shelf, so hopefully you'll find it fairly easy to get. Um, as always, of course, you can uh, buy them on a website like ColtTVMan.com. All right, so that pretty much does it here for this uh, model kit. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on my YouTube channel, or you can email me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. As always, I'm very happy to answer any questions that you may have. So uh, that does it for now, and thank you again for watching. I always appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.